Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another comic book related video. Now, what I wanted to do in this video is uh, sort of run you through the process, what basically took place when I was selling some comic books on eBay and I had a conflict with a buyer that they wanted to return the item, but things didn't really work out the way they had planned or I had imagined really and what i ended up having to do was contact ebay and talk to them and get the situation resolved and uh, just to let you know the situation ebay fa they found the situation in my favor right so they decided that you know there was no refund justified and uh, i don't get any negative feedbacks on my ebay account or whatnot right so i figured it, you guys would find this useful information and for those of you who don't know where this information is coming from just to give you a little quick intro of who i am um, i've been putting out a fair bit of comic book videos for the last five years or so we've gone through showing collections uh, reading comic books pricing comic books a little bit of grading not official grading but grading according to what i consider a comic book to be graded at we've been doing live stream of those things and then we've been also been listing the comic books on ebay right because i'm sort of sharing something that i love about my hobby which is everything about this hobby from the point of collecting comic books reading comic books sorting comic book grading comic books and every now and then when a need arises you go to your collection it's just like an investment really you go to your collection pull out some comic books if you need to raise some money and you sell some comic books right and we're gonna at some point take all of this information and include it with the mathematics uh, content that we've been creating the ASM asmr math and the language of mathematics and math in real life really link it up to personal finance and investing and look at all the metrics that we can uh, we can analyze right and we can look at to decide if it's a good thing doing this and how this works in other industries as well now just to let you know where I come from what my experience is with eBay I've been on eBay since 2002 for about 18 years now right I initially got on eBay to buy some stuff um, video gaming related stuff which I still have actually and then we will uh, go through that once we start uh, I'll show you what I ended up buying uh, once we start doing some gaming related uh, videos and whatnot right so I initially got on eBay bought some stuff ended up liking the experience so much I ended up selling some comic books right because I've been a comic book collector for 30 plus years now so I ended up selling some comic books and really enjoyed the experience and over the last 18 years I've bought a lot of stuff on eBay and I've sold a handful of things right either some comic books where I'm trying to get rid of some comic books or um, bringing some funds or there are things that we have that we no longer want to hold on to that we decide to put on eBay and sell them right as far as the buying aspect goes I bought some stuff that is not comic book related for example this lapel mic you see i bought off ebay but the majority of things that i bought on ebay is comic books related right and i have a hundred percent feedback um, rating i've never had a negative feedback and uh, any problems i've ever had with any sellers we've been able to resolve it without contacting eBay they either partial refund or full refund and we sort things out right as far as selling stuff goes um, I'm not sure how much how much stuff I've sold uh, maybe around 200 250 item over the last 18 years I've never had a, any problems with stuff I've been selling um, other than this round of stuff for the last uh, four months five months where we decided to live stream um, some of the someone some of these things that we're selling uh, specifically comic books that we've been selling where we've been listing the stuff where I had basically um, one partial refund I have to give someone and one time I didn't put a tracking on the package and the package didn't arrive right so I had to refund the person and the third issue I've had is what we're about to talk about okay so basically um, the the issue that i had with the listing that i sold was selling venom number three first print from 2018 by donny cates 
and it's the first appearance of Conal, the um, symbiote god, right? If you know the Spider-Man lore, uh, he's the god of the symbiotes, right? And we actually ended up doing a live stream of this uh, comic book because what I've been doing is on Twitch, I've been doing live streams of some of the comic books that we've been selling on eBay, right? So we do a live stream, we crack open uh, the comic book, take pictures of it, grade it, and then go through the process of listing it on eBay, right? So we did a live stream of this comic book and the video is available on BitChute and YouTube, right? So this comic book, we ended up listing on November 30th, 2019, okay? And it sold on December 7th, 2019. Now, when I listed it, I listed this thing at minimum starting bid of $40, right? I didn't put a limit on the, you know, what I'm willing to accept. I, I don't even know if people do that anymore. Actually, I've seen some people do that still. But basically, there's a minimum that I started off with and I'm satisfied with that minimum. If it sells for more, fantastic, right? So we listed this comic book at a $40 starting price, okay? And it's an auction bid. Now, seven days later, on December 7th, it sold for $65. And there was um, a bunch of people that were bidding on this. Um, I forget the, actually, let me bring it up. How many people were bidding on this? There was nine bids on this, and there was uh, three people uh, three different people that were trying to get their hands on this. Okay, one of these people had bought from me before, and the other person, the person that I ended up getting it, had never bought from me before, right? So it was a new buyer that I was sending the packages to, right? So the comic sold, listed for 40, sold for 65. And as soon as a comic sells, the first day when a comic sells, I usually contact the seller and say congratulations on your purchase and I don't have this email I'm going to read you some of the communication that we had right but I usually um, send an email saying congratulations on your purchase um, um, please let me know if you plan on bidding on anything else that way I'll hold on to the book and if you win any other auctions we can package the stuff and sell it as combined shipping right because shipping ends up being fairly expensive with me being in Canada as well right so that's the sort of the general email that I send people whoever ends up buying comic books from me right so the I sent that email out and the person didn't contact me for a couple of days so what I ended up doing or maybe one day what I ended up doing is invoicing them okay so I sent them an invoice the comic book sold for $65 and this is Canadian prices I'm going with sold for $65 and I sent them an invoice um, the shipping cost was $10 so I sent them an invoice of $75 okay they didn't pay right away four days later I sent them another invoice okay the same invoice $65 comic book $10 for the shipping and uh, sent them the invoice again and then they ended up paying the next day right and as soon as the person pays um, as soon as I get the comic books packaged up um, this is what I sent them right I said thank you for the payment and congrats on the buy uh, actually I probably sent this out this email out uh, as soon as I had the package out the door right which would have been the next day I usually do it within a day maximum two days right so I said hi M and we'll call them M hi M they changed their name by the way from the time I contacted them at the beginning of this transaction to the end of the transaction right I said hi M thank you for the payment and congrats on the buy wanted to let you know that the book is on its way and the tracking number is so and so okay to be on the safe side I also added signature uh, signature required as well just to make sure it gets to you safe and sound aside from that hope you are having a fantastic December peace chicho okay so this is the email I sent them regarding the package it's on its way and I took that tracking number and I updated the eBay sold listing so eBay is aware there's a tracking number on there. He's away aware there's a tracking number and there's a record of the tracking number, right? Now, 
I left it there because the book is on its way, right? And the shipping actually cost me like $21 something. I only charged them $10. So I took the $11 hit uh, extra cost because the shipping for me, for most of the packages that I've sent, has cost me more to ship than what I've been charging. For the next set of listings that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be kicking up my shipping price because that has been a fair bit, uh, especially when adding tracking. Okay, if the comics are a fair bit and my listings, I usually say initially I started off with saying if the comics are $50 or more, I'll add tracking for free. But I changed that up to if they're $75 or more, I'll add tracking. Now, this comic book sold for 65, but I added tracking and signature confirmation as well, just because it took a little bit of time for the person to pay. And he hadn't contacted me from any of the communications directly. Right. So I took a little bit of a hit on the shipping. Now, packages are on its way, and this package was going to someone in Ontario. I'm in British Columbia, so this was still within Canada, so it didn't have to go through any customs or anything. Okay. It got there within like three days. Now, I know it got there because I can track it on eBay. It tells me that the item is out for delivery, you know, where the item is, and the item has been sorted, and it's in the city that it's going to be delivered, and it's out for delivery, and if it gets delivered, you get a little tick mark saying it's been delivered. Now, this one said it was out for delivery, but then it didn't get delivered, but because I had signature confirmation on there, it went to the post office. It's, it was being held there for this person to go pick it up, right? So I sent them the following message because I saw that happening and the person hadn't gone and picked it up for like 10 days, right? And I didn't want the package. The post office will hold the package for a certain number of time and then they'll send it back again, right? And then I would have to pay shipping and get this book to them again and whatnot. So it would just cost me a fair bit. So I sent them the following message and the person had changed their name by this time, right? I said, hi, M. It's a different name, but starts off with the same letter. Hi, M. I hope you and your loved ones had had a fantastic holiday. Just wanted to let you know that from my end, it shows that the package has been at the post office waiting to be picked up since December 19th. And this email I'm sending on December 29th. So it's been 10 days, right? So it's been waiting to be picked up since December 19th. Figured I'd let you know just in case you weren't notified. All the best and wishing you a happy uh, a happy 2020 right so 10 days later the package has been sitting there I sent them a message but just in case there were holidays and whatnot right send them a message saying the package is there waiting for them now what ended up happening was they went and picked it up okay so I got a you know I checked the delivery notification and stuff and it was delivered which was great fantastic right that's what you want as a seller the comic delivered confirmation that has been delivered okay you don't want to get packages lost in the mail so tracking is a good idea to put on there and from now on I'm gonna put tracking on everything basically okay now it got delivered two weeks later I get a return request from this person now keep in mind I had sent out the package it was sitting at the post office for them for 10 days it took another couple of days right I sent them a message 10 days later it took another two three four days to go pick up the comic right and this is an expensive comic as far as I'm concerned $65 Canadian there's a fair price to pay for a comic book right so they let it sit at the post office for two weeks and then two weeks day later after they have picked it up they file a return oops return request right with eBay and I get this thing and I'm like, oh man, the return request. And I've never had a return request. I had one, actually, I no, not true. I had one return, uh, one person contact me. They didn't file a return request. One person contact me, say um, the comic was damaged um, and they didn't take it out of the bag. I asked them to take it out of the bag, take a picture, but they didn't do that. And I wasn't into dealing with this, so I refunded them two thirds of the cost of the comic book right so they were okay you know it was a $30 including shipping so it was a $20 comic book $10 shipping so I refunded them the 
twenty dollar of the comic books but not the shipping costs right so they were happy with that i was happy it was dealt with i wasn't happy but it, you know make the best of the situation and I had one one other person say the comic hadn't arrived i never had a return request not even from stuff that i've sold that wasn't comic books in the 18 years of being on ebay right so i looked at this thing i'm like oh man i had a feeling bad feeling that this was going to happen because the person had never replied to me directly right i sent them emails um, messages but they had never replied to me right so i got this return request and i'm started looking at what i need to do right so first thing i did was as soon as i got the return request i sent them the following message hi i just got received a return request for this book is there anything wrong with the book can we resolve this without a return like i don't even know what's wrong because i didn't he didn't contact me directly right and then i went on to ebay and I clicked on some clicks and i saw there uh there's a place where they file the claim right and i saw their message in the claim right and their message was this the reason for return was uh, doesn't match description of or photo photos right and the comment they had put on there was book has a ding on the top right corner it goes through most of the book I do I I don't know if it got damaged in the mail but it's not a 9.8 grade as advertised the rest of the book looks perfect and when we did the live stream of this comic book from all the comic books I've listed, and I've, I don't know how many comic books we've listed, I mean, I've got the table, I've got the data tabulated. The, towards the end, I didn't keep track of, you know, the last batch of last batch or last two batches of comic books we we're selling. I just I got behind, right? But we have enough data to process with the spreadsheet that we have. And if we don't, I'll dig up the stuff and I'll fill up the data. But basically, from all the comic books that we've listed. I don't think I've listed more than four books as 9.8. And when we did the live stream of this of this comic, this comic was beautiful, right? Like I don't usually list books at 9.8, right? I don't like I never list anything as a 10, right? I list things 9.4, 9.6, 9.6, 9.8. I listed this thing as solid 9.8 because it was a beautiful book. Okay. I know because I bought it myself, right? So this person is saying that the book got damaged and he had some pictures up. And the pictures were the were the tell really if you're a comic book collector up because there's no way this comic book would have been bent over like this if I mean the only way it could have happened, and I packaged this thing up beautifully, bubble wrap inside the like the only way lots of gap with bubble this comic would not have been bent over like this the only way it would bent over is someone put a took a metal rod and went through the box through the bubble wrap and put their finger and went like this right so he included like five pictures showing that it was bent over and whatnot i was like man and for me i didn't i didn't feel comfortable just refunding them and letting them keep the comic right so i was willing to eat more of the cost of this so what I ended up doing after looking at this, I posted the following comment. Oh, I just saw the, this is my comment. Oh, I just saw the pictures you provided. That's unfortunate. Was the box damaged in the shipping? Uh, would you accept a partial refund? So I posted the same thing as the message, but I had now seen the pictures, right? I didn't hear back from them. Okay so i sent them the following message i went on ebay and accepted a return i have no choice right and i said hi again it looks like you've marked that i've oh no this isn't here this is the one oh here we go i jumped ahead a couple of messages so after that basically uh i had to accept the return right so i went into the return thing and this is the message that I got from eBay. You accepted the return for Venom number three, and this is an eBay message. First print, 2018, Tawny Gaze, first appearance of Null, unread 9.8, near mint mint, right? 
your next step is to send the return shipping label to M by January 20th, 2000, uh, 2020, um, 2000. If you've already purchased the label, upload the label for the buyer or add tracking details so we can follow the package in case it gets lost, right? So tracking info is really important for this. If the buyer doesn't, um, if the buyer doesn't receive a label by January 20th, 2000, 2020, they can ask ask us to step in and help, right? And I don't want to get anybody eBay involved. So I sent this person the following message. Hi again. So I haven't heard from you regarding if you would accept a partial refund. Let me know what you would be happy with. If you don't want a partial refund and still want to return the comic, please send the comic back to the following address. Please include track tracking. It shouldn't cost more than $20, and it wouldn't, right? That's what it cost me. Once I get the book, I will give you a full refund as well as reimburse the shipping costs, right? And my apologies about the hassle. I've been on eBay since 2002, and this is my first ever return request so i'm not sure how it all works right and i sent them my address and i said please let me know if you have any questions thanks right so i'm being very polite as far as i'm concerned at this point i know this is a scam right so because i haven't heard from the guy at all yet right so i'm still being very polite because i have to i have to go through ebay i don't want any bad marks on my thing right so Time passes. I don't hear from this guy. There's no tracking number being posted. There's nothing. There's silence, right? And then I get uh, on February 8th, I believe this is on February 8th. On February 8th, I get a notification from eBay. We've asked the buyer to send the item, right? And they say, they, this is eBay's email now. In indicated that they posted the return. The item should now be delivered. Once you've received it, please issue the buyer refund by February 12th. Um, actually, let me check this out. When the refund is complete, uh, let me read the phone, uh, continue this up. Uh, when the refund is complete, you'll automatically receive a credit for the final value fee and other applicable fees. If the item hasn't arrived yet, the buyer may not be returning it if you like you can contact the buyer if you can't reach a resolution you can ask us to step in right so I believe let me do this I believe this is when I checked the eBay thing I believe this is the eBay email eBay sent me because what had happened is the person had gone on the eBay listing and marked the package as delivered to me that I hadn't received yet, right? So the person had marked the package delivered to me, which is, I found extremely weird because the package was not delivered to me, right? So I was very surprised that the person sending the package can confirm that the, that the package has arrived to me, which I found extremely wacko right so i try to contact the this person right where it says you can contact the buyer right it's a hyperlink so i clicked on it took me to the page where i can send the buyer message so i try to send the buyer message but the message wouldn't go through it was giving me an error i tried this in two days i tried it the first day i got this message and i tried it again the next day and it didn't work so i sent an email to the person directly again and this is my email hi again it looks like you've marked that I've received this item but I haven't yet can you please give me the tracking number I wasn't even aware that you had shipped it you never even contacted me when I sent you the refund return shipping info can you please let me know when you send the package where you sent it to and what the tracking number is would appreciate it thanks right heard nothing right and ebay had given me like five days or something to refund this person otherwise if we're going to refund them 
and then deduct me and stuff like this. It's just wacko, right? So I didn't hear from this guy for another two, three days. So I went to the page where the conflict is open and I asked eBay to step in. Okay. So this and the first time this didn't work, right? I got an email message from eBay saying, Oh, you can you can ask us to step in uh, by on the day that the refund is supposed to be given. And I'm like, man, I don't want to wait that long. So the next day I did this again. And this is the message I got, right? You asked eBay, and this is eBay's telling me this. You asked eBay to step in and help on February 11th. And the return was supposed to be, I was supposed to give this person the return on February 12th, right? So the next day I'm supposed to return $75 to this person, which I'm feeling very uncomfortable about doing, right? So eBay sent me the following message. You asked eBay to step in and help on February 11th, 2020. Customer support will review the information you provided and provide details on their decision within 48 hours. Please view the case detail for additional information, right? And I got a little message from them saying, you opened the case with us for Venom number three, first print, ba ba ba. We'll take, take it from here and review the case, including any messages you and the buyer sent through eBay. We'll get back to you within 48 hours. You can view the details in the case of the resolution, blah, 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 right? And I sent eBay a message regarding this, okay? Because when you're, when you're asking eBay to step in, you have to explain what the situation is, right? So this is what I wrote. Let me take a little sip of tea. By the way, this wasn't the end of it. I ended up having to call them. But let me tell you what I wrote, right? So on the eBay page where I'm asking eBay to step in, this was my message. I have not yet received this comic. I'm not sure why the buyer has stated otherwise. I asked them to send me the tracking information when they shipped the book, but they never did. I've sent them an email asking for this information, but I haven't heard from them yet. This buyer let the comic sit at the post office and did not even pick it up until I sent them a message telling them that the package was waiting there for them. I had, add, I had added tracking as well as signature confirmation. Two weeks later, they requested a refund, which is absurdly long period to sit on a book and then ask for a refund. I've been on eBay since 2020 and I've never dealt with anyone like this. Is this regular behavior for this user? Completely inconsiderate, zero direct communication, doesn't reply to messages, and dare I say, feels like a scammer. Please let me know what I need to do here. I have a perfect 100% feedback uh, rating for 18 years, but I can't refund this buyer if I haven't received a comic or heard from them. Thank you, right? So I'm still being polite, but I'm, being more direct with eBay and I said dare I say a scammer because you can't really call anyone a scammer unless you have proof right after this on December 12th I still hadn't heard from eBay right so I grabbed my phone and I called them right and if you've ever had to call eBay or any of these <laughs> organizations that are operating on that are mega corporations uh, trying to get a hold of a person is going to be difficult right but I sat behind the computer and doing my thing and I put speaker on the phone and I waited I called I waited and it actually didn't take long it took like 15 minutes okay 15 20 minutes maybe 15 20 minutes maybe right and a person came up on saying this is who they are and that's that that's that and i said oh okay great thank you very much uh, you know um been waiting for a while i'm glad someone came online came to answer the phone right uh so i explained to them you know they they asked me to confirm who i am and this and that and that. so we went through the confirmation thing and they asked me what was going on so i explained to them what was going on they read the information and they said okay 
they really can't deal with this so they have to pass me on to the next level so i'm like oh man we've got to go to the next level so they sent me to ebay's uh, conflict resolution right so i talked to this person and i explained to them what's going on i do let them that i've sent multiple messages to this person they've never contacted me they didn't send me tracking information or whatnot and the person looking at this uh, over the phone said I have great news for you Chicho uh, we've reviewed the situation and we found in your favor the money that we locked up that's what they're saying the money that we locked up on your PayPal account is now free to use and you don't have to refund the person and I was like ah. I was like pretty happy and the person could tell I go right on excellent and I asked them I go um, can I like how is this possible that someone like this can operate because obviously they've done this before right they I went to their feedback rating actually and this person and here's the kicker this person has a hundred percent positive feedback rating right which blows me away that this person can have a hundred percent positive feedback rating right uh, really because I'm pretty sure they've been doing this to other people uh, there I say they are a scammer but when I looked at their feedback rating a lot of these feedbacks aren't from the there's batches of the same buyer right or same seller right but one pattern I right noticed was uh, there's a lot of different buyers that they're buying from right you rarely see the same person being repeated unless they're leaving feedback in batches and what happens is when there is sellers you know big sellers that go through a lot of volume as soon as someone pays them they leave them the positive feedback i know the seller here that i buy comic books from uh he owns a comic book store he got scammed by a seller because as soon as the person paid he was leaving feedback and when he sent the books the person said there was problems with it and he didn't get paid for those books right and when i was talking with them i told them for my listings basically this is the sentence that i put on here that um just to let you guys know um who i am no the uh who i am basically this is this is what i say for who i am uh, based in canada i'm a private collector with a five star 100 percent feedback rating and i've been an ebay member since 2020 I take pride in my positive feedback writing and will do my best to make sure you're satisfied with your purchase feedback will be left once I know that you have received the books and are happy with your purchase okay everything that I list is my own private collection okay and later down I say I aim to please but I do not feel like dealing with scammers because this is a private collection I I'm not a huge seller right I take pride in come my comic books right so I asked the person the eBay representative if I if I could go and leave I, I wanted to make sure that the person can't leave a negative feedback for me and she you know she said no he can't leave a negative feedback for you and if he does it'll automatically be removed right and then I asked him can I leave a negative feedback for them because you know everything that they just put me through and then she goes yes you can and later on after I hung up with the with the EPA representative I went to try to leave a negative feedback and the timeline had um, had expired it had taken too long and I couldn't leave a ne negative feedback rating that was the message I was getting from eBay right so there was an error when it came to me leaving a negative feedback for this person so maybe this person is timing it in a way where he knows how long it takes I think it's two to three I don't know what it is 60 days maybe where once he goes through this whole thing he knows that the sellers can't leave, leave negative feedback if they're the ones that don't leave positive feedback unless the buyer has left positive feedback they know that the buyer is satisfied right and this was the message that I got from eBay okay the case is now closed right we have reviewed this case and closed it without refunding the buyer the case will not affect your seller performance 
any feedback left for this transaction will be removed the buyer did not return the item to you within the required time frame right and that's the message i got uh, sent to me through email and this was the message that was post posted in the case ebay customer service service has made a final decision the buyer did not return the item to you within the required time frame this case will not affect your seller performance any feedback left for this transaction will be removed final decision the case was found in your favor right and then for transaction information any remaining funds from this paypal transactions are available so they unlocked the funds that they had locked up which i didn't even know about right and what they told me was this is basically ebay's uh, seller protection program which i didn't even know i was in i'm assuming they automatically put you in ebay selling program i don't know if i've approved it or i required it or i wanted it or something automatically done for member all members certain members legacy members i don't know what it is right but it's basically called ebay's seller protection program that's what the the ebay representative referred uh to okay which was fantastic i was very happy and ebay sent me a little message afterwards uh, you know asking me uh you were just in touch with our customer service team and we'd like to know how 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 we did to get started how satisfied were you with your customer services and i just I, I never do this okay but i went through this feedback thing and i said positive thank you very much you guys were great and i went all the way to the end and sent it to them so they get the positive feedback so they do appreciate that um, they know that i appreciated their service and i'm glad that it the automation didn't force me to refund this scammer right so that's how i dealt with this thing um, and i wanted to share this because uh, i've heard some horror stories through ebay both from sellers and buyers right so i don't you know consider this i mean i'm representing a seller right now right uh, so for sellers hopefully you find this useful for buyers I've never scammed anyone on eBay I'm here because I find the service extremely useful this connection extremely useful uh, both to sell stuff and to buy stuff so I'm here for the long game and there are scammers around both as sellers and buyers right I bought comic books from people where they described as something in you know there's page torn out or the centerfold is loose and stuff like this and they're power sellers right so i caught them and say hey listen this wasn't even described like you guys what's going on and they either refund me there's only been like four or five times right they either refund me the full amount or half the amount and i've even been satisfied with half the amount right because i don't want to go through the whole bureaucracy of it and it's unfortunate that they pull this scam but i would never buy from them again right and hopefully they lose lose transaction the cost to do business becomes too much so they can't scam people anymore and hopefully buyers who are scamming people there's a certain pattern to this uh, hopefully they get knocked out okay uh, they get removed from scamming people and hopefully eBay didn't refund this person right it would suck if they refunded them I hope they stay true to their word and they didn't didn't refund this person right because that's the only way that scammers will go away right if the cost of doing if the cost of their scam is just too much for them right heavy topic i guess maybe but it was found in our favor so that's fantastic and now that that's resolved i'll probably start listing more things on ebay <laughs> more i sort of put things on pause until this was resolved because i wasn't uh, I just didn't feel good uh, having this hanging over my head and then still doing business on eBay right it just didn't feel right I had to go through the whole 
thing again. I know I promised some people I was going to list some comic books. They've been waiting uh, on eBay. And I promised them like a month ago, but this thing kicked into gear and I had to wait until the thing was resolved. Okay. I hope you found it useful um, and uh, helpful. And if you do, unfortunately, ever have to deal with this, um, be kind, go through a bureaucracy, cross your T's, dot your I's, make sure you communicate, right? Offer alternatives. And if it doesn't work, don't automatically, if you think you're being scammed, don't automatically refund them. Contact eBay, make it known. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes energy, like it sucks. But take the effort to let them know that this user is pulling a scam then you're not happy with it and slowly hopefully that will snowball into there being less scammers doing business on eBay uh, because it's just cost of doing business is too much right or cost of doing scams is too much okay that's it for now gang uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video bye for now